everyone. My name is Jamon McKinney, or you can just call me Juice because that is my nickname. In today's episode, I want to discuss who is maybe arguably the most underrated team heading into the 2020-21 NFL season. I will give you guys four teams that I believe are super duper underrated heading into this year. And let's get started. Now, Arizona and Denver, to me, are sleeper teams, teams that potentially could, could make a playoff push. But I think that as far as being underrated, you know, people are giving Kyler Murray some MVP talk already. I don't think that he's quite, you know, going to be be that good this year. He'll be very good. But some people said that Kyler Murray potentially could be an MVP candidate this year. And I think that a lot of, you know, media members, the people that just know football overall, have kind of wrapped their arms around Denver. So while those teams are underrated, they're not as underrated as these following four teams. Denver and Arizona don't make my list. The most underrated team in all football this year is the Washington football team. Up next is the Detroit Lions. Up next is the Miami Dolphins. And up next is the Las Vegas Raiders. Let's start off with the Washington football team and why they're the most underrated team in all football. Las Vegas thinks that the Washington football team is going to be god-awful this year. They have the second worst odds to win the Super Bowl. That tells me that Vegas thinks that Washington is the second worst team in all football at the moment. That's not true. Washington actually has some real talent on their team that I like a lot, especially on defense. And I believe Washington is going to be a much improved team this year. I believe they at least double their win total and probably win about seven games this year. They have a very good defensive line. Led by Chase Young, who to me is the best overall defensive player to come out of the draft since Aaron Donald or maybe Khalil Mack. I believe Chase Young is a generational talent. The guy has 16 and a half sacks last year at Ohio State, over 20 tackles for loss. That guy's a beast. He's better than both Bowser brothers, in my opinion. And listen, I think Chase Young is a generational talent that's going to turn that defense around. Similar to how Nick Boza turned around the 49ers defensive line. The 49ers were drafting, you know, first rounders on the defensive line. But they just need that one extra guy that was just an absolute stud to put them over the top. And I believe Chase Young is that guy. Not to mention, Washington has three other first rounders on their defensive line, okay? They got four first rounders on that defensive line. You've got Ryan Kerrigan, you've got Deron Payne, you've got Jonathan Allen, you've got Matt Ioannidis, who's a very, very underrated player and may have been their best overall defensive player last year. He's very, very good. Ruben Foster returns at linebacker, and Ruben Foster was actually the highest graded rookie linebacker when he was playing games for the 49ers his rookie season. He struggled with injuries, but I do think that Ruben Foster if healthy this year, is going to be very, very good. Cole Holcomb had over 100 tackles last year. you got Thomas Davis. This defense, to me, is going to be a top-10 unit, okay? They also added um, Ronald Darby and Kendall Fuller, two solid defensive backs to the secondary. You've got guys like Jimmy Moreland and Fabian Moreau, who have some talent as well. I believe Washington is going to have a top-10 defense this year. And what does that mean? That means they're probably going to double their win total because we look at... um. Nine of the 10 teams that finished top 10 in points per game allowed this past year, they won eight games or more. The only team that did not accomplish that was the Denver Broncos, and they had washed up terrible Joe Flacco playing games. I think Dwayne Haskins is going to be a legit quarterback, top 10 quarterback in the future, definitely in my opinion. He has a cannon for an arm, maybe not a cannon, but a very strong arm. He can make all the throws. He reminds me a lot of a young Ben Roethlisberger, and, and, li and listen, Dwayne Haskins, the final three games of the season, five touchdowns, one interception. Dwayne Haskins got better and better every single game last season. He kept improving throughout the entire season. I believe Dwayne Haskins is ready to roll, throwing to Terry McLaurin, throwing to Antonio Gandy Golden, who's a very good rookie wide receiver that I liked in the draft, and throwing to Steven Sims, who has a lot of talent. I think he has some very good running backs at his disposal as well. Washington is going to be arguably the most improved team. They'll double their win total at least. Up next, I got to go with the Detroit Lions. Detroit last year was not an awful team when Matthew Stafford was playing games. When Matthew Stafford was healthy, the Detroit Lions were 3-4-1. And, and that's not great, 
but it's not god awful as well. In my recent preview and prediction video, I had Detroit at 9 wins this year. And I will not be shocked if Detroit finds themselves as a playoff team this year. You might, and you might think to yourself, how can Detroit be a playoff team when they were picking top three in the draft this past year? Well, let's think about it. For one, the only reason they were in position to be drafting top three in the first place was because Matthew Stafford got hurt. Okay, that's one. But also, San Francisco and Buffalo made the playoffs last year. Those two teams had something in common. They were picking top 10 in the draft the previous season. I think Matthew Stafford is the most underrated quarterback in all of football. This guy last year was on pace to throw for 5,000 yards, 38 touchdown passes, and 10 interceptions before he got hurt, and he had a 106 pass rating last year. Now he's got Kenny Galladay at wide receiver, who for the last two years has really burst onto the scene. The last two seasons, he's got eight, he's got 16 touchdown catches, led the league in touchdown catches last year, and both seasons went over 1,000 yards. Marvin Jones is a very, very reliable number two. Danny Amendola is a good number three. TJ Hawkinson has a lot of talent. Some people were comparing him to Rob Gronkowski. Not to mention Matthew Stafford has three really good running backs in DeAndre Swift, Kerryon Johnson, and Bo Scarborough. I also think Detroit's defense will be improved by them adding Jeffrey Okuda, by them adding Desmond Trufant, adding Jamie Collins, and Trey Flowers is an underrated player as well who had a decent season last year. I believe Detroit is going to be competing for a wild card spot. I don't think they're quite on Green Bay's level quite yet, but I do think Detroit is a very well above average team that will score some points. And Matthew Stafford will have a good season this year, in my opinion. I think Detroit's the second most underrated team in all of football. Up next is the Miami Dolphins. I cannot help but be so optimistic about the Miami Dolphins' future. This is a team that last year started the season 0-7. The, the first game of the season, they lost 59 to nothing to the Baltimore Ravens. But throughout the season, that young team got better and better every single game. And listen, I think I think Miami's a very underrated team. The, the final nine games of the season, they went 5-4 and four as a football team. And let's be real, they were not a very talented team last year. They beat teams like the Patriots and the Eagles in the last couple weeks of the season when both those teams were vying for playoff spots and playoff seeding. So Miami got some real wins at the end of the year despite not having the best talent. And I'd argue that Miami had arguably the best offseason among all 32 NFL teams when you combine their free agency period and the draft. I think Tua is being put in a great position to succeed. He's going to be running an offense led by Chan Gailey, the offensive coordinator, that runs an offense very similar to how he ran that offense at Alabama. And also, the Miami Dolphins did a very good job of trying to address their offensive line during the offseason. They drafted four offensive linemen. They signed Ted Karras and Eric Flowers to bolster up the offensive line. Even if only one player out of the, out of the offensive linemen that they drafted hits big, that's still a win for the Dolphins. Their offensive line should be much improved. They they went out and got Matt Breda. They went out and got Jordan Howard. Their running back core should be improved. Devontae Parker is a star in the making at wide receiver. He had a breakout season. He finally he finally lived up to expectations this past year. Had over a thousand yards and nine, and nine touchdown catches. Mike Kosicki is a very underrated tight end. And the defense now has some real players. You got Byron Jones in the secondary. You signed Kyle Van Noy. You signed Shaq Lawson. The Miami Dolphins are doing a very good job of building their team very similar to how Bill Belichick assembled the Patriots for over two decades. And I think Miami is definitely on the rise. And last but not least, the Las Vegas Raiders are the fourth most underrated team heading into the 2020-21 NFL season, in my opinion. Do people not realize this Raiders team was vying for a playoff spot 10 games into the, into the season last year? This Raiders team last year was 6-4 and four through 10 games. Now, did it help due to the fact that they had a very easy schedule and their division outside of Kansas City kind of fell apart last year? Absolutely. But this Raiders team has some talent. And now you give Derek Carr some more explosive weapons on the outside by drafting Henry Ruggs, by drafting Lynn Bowen Jr. out of Kentucky, by drafting Brian Edwards out of South Carolina. you got Darren Waller, who had a very excellent season last year. you got Hunter Renfro, who, who was a 
fifth round draft pick steal out of Clemson. This offensive line is well above average, led by Trent Brown. And while the defense is a work in progress, they made some very key moves in the offseason, one of which adding Corey Littleton, a linebacker. You just drafted Damon Arnett, who should help out your secondary. And not to mention, Max Crosby was an absolute steal from this past year's draft. He's a very good young player that showed a lot of promise as a rookie. I think the Raiders are the fourth most underrated team in all football at the moment. Not to mention, you've got a guy like Josh Jacobs, who's a beast at running back. So the Raiders, yeah, I think the Raiders are actually a very underrated team. So there you have it. The four most underrated teams heading into the 2020-21 NFL season. Number one, Washington. Number two, Detroit Lions. Number three, Miami Dolphins. Number four, Las Vegas Raiders. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Please also note that the Juice Alert Sports Podcast is not just a YouTube channel. It is available on all podcasting platforms, including Spotify, Google Podcasts, iTunes, and Apple Podcasts. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this content with all your friends. This podcast is my favorite thing in the entire world right now. It is my passion. And I want more people to listen to this podcast. I really want this podcast to grow. Also, a fun fact about me is that I want to go into the sports broadcasting and media world once I graduate from the University of Toledo, a college in Northern Ohio. I am looking to become one of the next great sports broadcasters and analysts out in the world. And I potentially would like to start my own network if this podcast really truly grows or if I fall short of that goal, I would love to work for a big time network like ESPN or Fox Sports 1. I am open to all networks. So if you believe in my dreams and you see or hear my passion through the screen, be sure to tell all your friends about the Juice Alert Sports Podcast. Stay motivated, you guys. Have a God-blessed day, and I'm out.